Okay, so here's the first video that is going to be about prehistory. And uh, I want to keep in mind, I want you to keep in mind a couple of things. Like, number one, if you, if you feel like things are going too fast, don't forget you can pause the video and you can use your notes while you're going into this. And I recommend that you have a piece of paper and uh, you write down some questions that you may have or uh, any ideas that you think are really, really important as you watch the video. And uh, I'll come back on at the end and talk to you about a couple of key points and what are the main things that we want to get out of uh, the video that you're about ready to watch on uh, our prehistory notes. Okay, the first unit uh, and the first part is on how humans have changed. And we'll watch that right now. Bye-bye. Okay, welcome to our first video for World History to 1500 with Mr. Berner. This is Unit 1, Part 1, and we're going to be talking about hunter-gatherers in this part of the uh, unit. And you shouldn't be surprised, it's about hunters and gatherers, and that's how they're going to find their food. Here is our SOL. We're going to talk about how geography had a huge impact on early hunter-gatherer societies. And then we're going to be listing the characteristics of hunter-gathering societies, including their use of tools and fire. Okay, so this is the Paleolithic Age. That's where we're going to start. Paleo means old. Lithic means stone. So this era is known as the Old Stone Age. Now, why is it called the Old Stone Age? Well, I think you probably can figure it out. Almost all of the tools were made from, you guessed it, stone. So the tools and weapons were made of stone, and that's why this is known as the Stone Age. <clears throat> okay, so what does Paleolithic mean? Make sure you fill that in on your notes. I got a cool old man with a rock. So you should be able to figure it out. Okay, so what did these earliest uh, ancestors of humans look like? Well, the first one we're going to talk about is Lucy. Lucy's scientific name is Australopithecus. So where do you think Lucy came from? Uh, many of you may have guessed Australia, but that would not be right. Uh, the correct answer is Africa, and Eastern Africa to be uh, specific. Lucy was uh, a early primate of uh, human origin. And the big difference between Lucy and an ape was Lucy's hip bones, which allowed her to walk upright. Uh, she was not very tall, probably a little over three feet tall, and uh, obviously had a very elongated jaw and a smaller cranium. And we'll talk about how we think human ancestors or hominids changed over time. Check this out. Here is Australopithecus. You can see a huge freaking jaw and uh, a smaller head. Then you move next to Homo erectus, which had a smaller jawline and a bigger head. And uh, there's one in between that called Homo habilis, where they think they're the ones who actually invented fire. Uh, or discovered how to use fire. And then comes uh, the Homo sapiens. The first of those we think was the Neanderthal. And uh, somewhere around 100 to 200,000 years ago. And then lastly you have Homo sapiens sapiens which are modern humans. And uh, you can notice a much bigger melon and a much smaller jawline all the way over on the right. <coughs> okay. So all of these ancestors are known as hominids. Hominids are humans and other creatures that walk upright on two feet. The earliest, as we talked about, was Australopithecus, or Lucy. These uh, first hominids are thought to have emerged in East Africa uh, in the Great Rift Valley around three to four million years ago. And then comes Homo habilis. It's a Latin word which means person with ability, meaning handy humans. Uh, they came uh, in a phase between Australopithecus and Homo erectus. And it was somewhere between 2.5 and 1.6 million years ago. Then Homo erectus, which was about 1.8 million years ago. And uh, <clears throat> it means upright walking human being. And as you can see, the the 
the, the hominid that is here is starting to look more human-like. The first hominids to leave Africa and move to Europe and Asia were probably Homo erectus. They also used more complex tools. So they took that rock, which had been everyone's best buddy, and they tied it onto a stick. Yeah, he had a good club then. Or they might have even sharpened their rocks. Now we're really getting to be complex. You get the idea, right? <clears throat> All right. So using the chart and the article that I've given you and what we've talked about with some of the additional videos, I would like for you to examine some of the ways humans have changed and write some of these reasons right here on your notes. Okay, so let's talk about the field of archaeology. Archaeologists study the past uh, societies through the analysis of what people have left behind. Primarily artifacts. Artifacts are those things that people leave behind and they can include all of these things. Tools, weapons, uh, art and sculpture, pottery, jewelry, human remains, ancient buildings, and monuments. So, all of these things could be studied by archaeologists. Fossils or human remains or animal or plant fossils are also studied by archaeologists and anthropologists. And we can learn a lot of things about those, like what people ate, uh, what animals they had around, and their way of life. Now, how do we know how long ago some of these things are when we find them? Well, there's a lot of different ways, but one of the primary ways is through carbon dating. Carbon dating uses the uh, radioactive isotope of carbon. It's called carbon-14, and it's in all things that are organic. In other words, all things that are ever alive, plants and animals. So when we die, we know that carbon-14 has a half-life of 5,000 years. That means it takes 5,000 years for a half of the carbon-14 in something to break down. If we know how much carbon-14 something has left, we can count back to how much it had at the beginning and determine its age. Now it's limited uh, to a certain degree, obviously, to things 50,000 years old or less to be terribly accurate. Now there are also some other ways that we can date things. Uh, relative dating, when we know the date of something and we find them in the same layer of soil. Uh, that doesn't mean that you're dating your sister. That would be something totally different with relative dating. There's also some other types of dating that are more modern, and uh, you may want to do some research on those yourself. Okay, so how does carbon dating work? And here's the way it happens. The sun's cosmic rays bombard the atmosphere, and you get an atmospheric mixing of carbon dioxide, carbon, and nitrogen, and then CO2 photosynthesis with a carbonate exchange between the ocean, the upper troposphere, and, okay, I'm just making all this up, but it sounded really cool, and there is some legitimacy to how all this happens with carbon into living things. Okay. So, on your notes, the first thing I would like for you to do is list some of the things that archaeologists might study from the past. Do that right here. And then, I want you to get together, and or on your own, obviously, since you're watching this at home, think of some ways or some other example of when we piece together information to make decisions or to uh, try to investigate things. When are times when we piece together information or evidence to reach a conclusion. All right, so let's talk Paleolithic. Okay, so what happened is people start to, to grow and to uh, move around in small groups. And these are called hunting gathering clans. <coughs> I'm hunting rabbit. Right, you're hunting. So, here's the deal. These are the traits of hunter-gatherer societies. First off, people are nomadic. They wander from place to place in search of food and shelter. The second thing is they had simple stone tools. They invented the first tools and weapons during this time period. They lived in groups called clans, usually 20 to 30 people max, and they used caves for shelter. They learned how to control and make fire during the Paleolithic period. 
This was to keep warm and then later on they're going to cook their food with it. They're also going to develop oral or spoken language. At first it might be grunts or sounds but they knew what these grunts and sounds mean. And then they're going to develop cave art. And cave art's important to us because it is a primary source of what these people did with their lives. Now, the role of men and women vary differently in these societies. And we're going to pause right here. The role was for gathering for women and caring for children. Hey man, what's up? Oh. Okay, so let's move on to the next thing. All right. So what was the primary tool of the Paleolithic era? Aha, uh -huh. it was the rock. Do you smell what the rock is cooking? Uh, it probably wasn't that rock, was it? Oh, yeah. Not this type of rock. Yeah, it probably wasn't that rock either, was it? That's the rock. And remember, this rock was a tool for everything, so it was probably better labeled as a Swiss Army rock. Hey, just because they had these tools didn't know how uh, mean they knew how to use them, right? Okay, so now here's what I want you to do. Take those six traits of hunter-gatherer societies. You know, nomadic, using stone tools, living in groups called clans, learning how to make and control fire, developing oral language, and making cave art. And I want you to rank them one through six and be able to defend your choice for which was most important. Right there. Okay, so what are the big ideas of this video? The first one is that early hominids developed in East Africa millions of years ago. The second is scientists use many techniques to study prehistory. And the last idea is that hunter-gatherers develop a group of traits which improve life and overcome environmental challenges. Okay, hope you enjoyed the video. Make sure you keep up with your notes and do your journals. Okay, so after watching the video, make sure that you answer the questions, jot those down on paper. Make sure that you've written some questions to help yourself out. And then please, please make sure that you follow along, fill in your notes where you think you are. And remember the notes ask you to do activities. So put those ideas together, read the questions carefully, and then we'll discuss some of your answers tomorrow in class.